Weimar Classicism German, Weimarer Classic was a German literary and cultural movement, whose practitioners established a new humanism, from the synthesis of ideas from Romanticism, Classicism, and the Age of Enlightenment. The Weimarer Classic movement lasted 33 years, from 1772 until 1805, and involved intellectuals such as Johann Wolfgang Goethe, Johann Gottfried Herder, Friedrich Schiller, and Christoph Martin Wieland, and then was concentrated upon Goethe and Schiller during the period 1788–1805. Development Background The German Enlightenment, called neoclassical, burgeoned in the synthesis of empiricism and rationalism as developed by Christian Thomasius and Christian Wolff. This philosophy, circulated widely in many magazines and journals, profoundly directed the subsequent expansion of German speaking and European culture. The inability of this common sense outlook convincingly to bridge feeling and thought, body and mind, led to Immanuel Kant's epical, critical philosophy. Another, though not as abstract, approach to this problem was a governing concern with the problems of aesthetics. In his Aesthetica of 1750, volume 2, 1758, Alexander Baumgarten (1714–62) defined aesthetics which he coined earlier in 1735, with its current intention as the science of the lower faculties, i.e., feeling, sensation, imagination, memory, et al., which earlier figures of the Enlightenment had neglected. The term, however, gave way to misunderstandings due to Baumgarten's use of the Latin in accordance with the German renditions, and consequently this has often led many to falsely undervalue his accomplishment. It was no inquiry into taste, into positive or negative appeals, nor sensations as such but rather a way of knowledge. Baumgarten's emphasis on the need for such «sensuous» knowledge was a major abetment to the «pre-romanticism» known as Sturm und Drang of which Goethe and Schiller were notable participants for a time. <laughs> Cultural and historical context Following Goethe's competition with and separation from Wieland and Herder, the movement Weimar Classicism is often described to have occurred only between Goethe's first stay in Rome 1786 and the death of Schiller 1805, his close friend and collaborator, underrating especially Wieland's influence on German intellectual and poetic life. Therefore, the Weimar Classicism could also be started with the arrival of Wieland 1772 and extended beyond Schiller's death until the death of Wieland 1813 or even of Goethe himself 1832. In Italy, Goethe aimed to rediscover himself as a writer and to become an artist, through formal training in Rome, Europe's school of art. While he failed as an artist, Italy appeared to have made him a better writer. Schiller's evolution as a writer was following a similar path to Goethe's. He had begun as a writer of wild, violent, emotion-driven plays. In the late 1780s he turned to a more classical style. In 1794, Schiller and Goethe became friends and allies in a project to establish new standards for literature and the arts in Germany. By contrast, the contemporaneous and efflorescing literary movement of German Romanticism was in opposition to Weimar and German Classicism, especially to Schiller. It is in this way both may be best understood, even to the degree in which Goethe continuously and stringently criticized it through much of his essays, such as On Dilettantism, On Art and Literature. After Schiller's death, the continuity of these objections partly elucidates the nature of Goethe's ideas in art and how they intermingled with his scientific thinking as well, inasmuch as it gives coherence to Goethe's work. Weimar classicism may be seen as an attempt to reconcile in binary synthesis. The vivid feeling emphasized by the Sturm und Drang movement with the clear thought emphasized by the Enlightenment, thus implying Weimar classicism is intrinsically unplatonic. On this Goethe remarked, The idea of the distinction between classical and romantic poetry dictung, which is now spread over the whole world, and occasions so many quarrels and divisions, came originally from Schiller and myself. 
I laid down the maxim of objective treatment of poetry, and would allow no other, but Schiller, who worked quite in the subjective way, deemed his own fashion the right one, and to defend himself against me, wrote the treatise upon naive and sentimental poetry, he proved to me that I myself, against my will, was romantic, and that my Iphigenia, through the predominance of sentiment, was by no means so classical and so much in the antique spirit as some people supposed. The Schlegels took up this idea, and carried it further, so that it has now been diffused over the whole world, and every one talks about classicism and romanticism—of which nobody thought fifty years ago." The Weimar movement was notable for its inclusion of female writers. Die Horen included works by several women, including a serially published novel, Agnes von Lillian, by Schiller's sister-in-law Caroline von Wolzogen. Other women published by Schiller included Sophie Moreau, Frederica Brunn, Amelie von Imhoff, Elisa von der Rick, and Louise Brockmann. Between 1786 and Schiller's death in 1805, he and Goethe worked to recruit a network of writers, philosophers, scholars and artists to their cause. This alliance later became known as Weimar Classicism, and it came to form a part of the foundation of 19th-century Germany's understanding of itself as a culture and the political unification of Germany. <laughs> Aesthetic and philosophical principles These are essentials used by Goethe and Schiller. Gehalt, the inexpressible, felt thought, or import, which is alive in the artist and the percipient that he or she finds means to express within the aesthetic form, hence Gehalt is implicit with form. A work's Gehalt is not reducible to its Inhalt. Gestalt, the aesthetic form, in which the import of the work is stratified, that emerges from the regulation of forms these being rhetorical, grammatical, intellectual, and so on abstracted from the world or created by the artist, with sense relationships prevailing within the employed medium. Stoff, Schiller and Goethe reserve this almost solely for the forms taken from the world or that are created. In a work of art, Stoff designated as inhalt or content, when observed in this context, is to be indifferent, gleichgültig, that is, it should not arouse undue interest, deflecting attention from the aesthetic form. Indeed, Stoff i.e., also the medium through which the artist creates needs to be in such a complete state of unicity with the gestalt of the art symbol that it cannot be abstracted except at the cost of destroying the aesthetic relations established by the artist. <laughs> <laughs> Primary authors Goethe and Schiller Although the vociferously unrestricted, even «organic» works that were produced, such as Wilhelm Meister, Faust, and West Ostlicher Divan, where playful and turbulent ironies abound, may perceivably lend Weimar classicism the double, ironic title, «Weimar Romanticism». It must nevertheless be understood that Goethe consistently demanded this distance via irony to be imbued within a work for precipitate aesthetic affect. Schiller was very prolific during this period, writing his plays Wallenstein 1799, Mary Stuart 1800, The Maid of Orleans 1801, The Bride of Messina 1803, and William Tell 1804. Topic: <laughs> Primary works of the period. Topic. Christoph Martin Wieland Alcest, Stage Play, 1773, First on Stage, Weimar, May 25, 1773 Die Geschichte der Abderiten, Novel on Ancient Abdera, Leipzig 1774–1780 Hon und Gulpenha, Rhymed Novel, Weimar 1778 Schock Lolo, Rhymed Novel, Weimar 1778 Oberon, rhymed novel, Weimar 1780. D. Shiniston, Tom. I3, Winterthur 1786 to 1789. Gehemi Geschichte des Philosophen Peregrinus Proteus, novel, Weimar 1788-89, Leipzig 1791. Agathodemon, novel, Leipzig 1796 to 1797. Aristipp und Einige seiner Zeitgenossen, Novel on Aristippus, Tom. 
IIV, Leipzig, Goshen 1800–1802. Johann Gottfried Herder Volksleader Nepst Untermisch ten anderen Stücken 1778–1779, squared 1807, Stimmen der Volker in Liedern Ideen zur Philosophie der Geschichte der Menschheit Essays, Tom. IIV, 1784–1791 Brief zur Beforderung der Humanität, Collected Essays, 1791–1797 Terpsichore, Lübeck 1795 Chrysalis Schriften, Five Collections, Riga 1796–1799 Metacritic zur Kritik der Reinen Vernunft, Essay, Part 1 plus E, Leipzig 1799 Caligon, Leipzig 1800 <laughs> Johann Wolfgang von Goethe Egmont, Trauerspiel, begun in 1775, I'm Druck 1788, Wilhelm Meister's Theatralische Sendung, NVEL, Ab 1776, I'm Druck 1911, Stella, Ein Schauspiel für Liebende, Stag Play, 1776, Iphigenie auf Tories, Iphigenia in Tories, Stage Play, printed 1787, Torquato Tasso, Stage Play, 1780, printed 1790. Romish Elegine, written 1788 to 90. Venizanish Epigram, 1790. Faust, Ein Fragment, 1790. Betrage zur Optik, Theory of Colors, 1791 90 seconds. Derberger General, Stage Play, 1793. Reinecke Fuchs. Reinecke Fox, Hexametric EPOS, 1794. Unterhaltungen Deutscher Ausgewanderten, Conversations of German Refugees, 1795. Das Marchen, The Green Snake and the Beautiful Lily, Fairy Tale, 1795. Wilhelm Meister's Lehrjahre, Wilhelm Meister's Apprenticeship, Novel, 1795 96. Faust. Eine Tragödie. Faust. I. 1797, first print 1808. Novelle. 1797. Hermann und Dorothea. Hermann and Dorothea. Hexametric EPOS, 1798. Die Natterliche Tochter. Stage play, 1804. Die Walverwandtschaften. Elective Affinities. Novel, 1809. Topic: Friedrich von Schiller. Don Carlos, stage play, 1787. Über den Grund der Vergnügens und Tradition Gegenstanden, Essay, 1792. Augustenberger Brief, Essays, 1793. Über Anmut und Word, Essay, 1793. Callias Brief, Essays, 1793. Uber die Aesthetische Erziehung des Menschen, On the Aesthetic Education of Man, Essays, 1795, Uber Naive und Sentimentalische Dichtung, Essay, 1795, Der Tauker, Poem, 1797, Die Kranich des Ibikus, Poem, 1797, Ritter Toggenberg, Poem, 1797, Der Ring des Polycrates, Poem, 7987, Der Geisterseher, The Ghost Seer, 1789. Dieberg Shaft, Poem, 1798. Wallenstein, Trilogy of Stage Plays, 1799. Das Lied von der Glock, Poem, 1799. Maria Stuart, Mary Stuart, Stage Play, 1800. Die Jungfrau von Orleans, The Maid of Orleans, Stage Play, 1801. Die Brot von Messina, The Bride of Messina, Stage Play, 1803. Das Siegesfest, Poem, 1803. Wilhelm Tell, William Tell, Stage Play, 1803, 04. Die Hüttiging der Kunste, Poem, 1804. Demetrius, Stage Play, Incomplete, 1805. Topic. 
by Goethe and Schiller both in collaboration. Die Horen, edited by Schiller, periodical, 1795 to 96. Musenalmanac, editorship, many contributions, 1796 to 97. Zenian, poems, 1796. Almanac, editorship, main contributions, 1798 to 00. Propylane periodical, 1798 to 01. See also works by Herder, works by Goethe, and works by Schiller. Selected literature Primary Secondary See also Notes External links Primary sources On the Sublime by Schiller Introduction to the Propylene by Goethe Other sources Weimar Classicism in Literary Encyclopedia Classic Siftung Weimar in German Goethe's Allianz MIT Schiller in German Der Spate Goethe in German Center for Intercultural Studies Ernst Cassirer and Weimar Classicism English Goethe Society Goethe Society of North America